to save us all from Satan's power and we have gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring. such a disturbance. No, Mr. Scrooge. Well, then do tell. Why all this uproar? Why all this kettle outside my window when there's work to be done? It's Christmas Eve, Mr. Scrooge. We wanted to bring you a Christmas song. Oh! You wanted to bring me a Christmas song, did you? Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Oh. Well, I don't want a Christmas song. <laughs> what I want is silence. Silence, I tell you. How's a man to get a decent day's work done with all of this caterwauling in the streets? I do not have time to waste hanging about listening to street urchins wailing about a holiday which I do not observe. Now, go away. But, sir, it's Christmas Eve. Uh, what of it? Uh, a day like any other day? Not to be trifled away with frivolity when there's work to be done? Now, for the last time, be gone with you, each and every one of you, before I summon the law on you. Be gone! Like ruddy smears upon the palpable brown hair. Fog 
poured in a rugged chink in the keyhole, and it was so dense without, and although the street was of the narrowest, the houses opposite were near and Mr. Cratchit! The fire has gone cold, sir. Mr. Cratchit, come here. Yes, Mr. Scourge. What is this? A coat. And this? A waistcoat? Yes. They are clothes, and as such, once purchased, may be used indefinitely. Coal, on the other hand, burns. Coal is costly. We'll be using no more coal today. If I see you make one more move toward that coal bin, I shall be forced to assume that your services are no longer required. Well, would it be too much to ask you to get back to work? Oh, of course, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Mr. Carrington. Yes, Merry Christmas, Fred. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. I said, Merry Christmas. Ah, humbug. Christmas, a humbug, Uncle. Surely you don't mean that. I do. What right have you to be merry at Christmas? What possible reason could you have for being merry? You're poor enough. Come then. What reason have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're certainly rich enough. Ah, humbug. Don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in a world of fools such as this? Out upon a merry Christmas. Oh, what's Christmas time but a, a time for paying your bills without any money or for finding yourself another year older and not one hour richer? If I, if I could work my way, every idiot who went about with a Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding. <laughs> yes, and very much a stake of holly through his heart, that he would. Uncle! <laughs> you keep Christmas your way. Let me keep it mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Then let me leave it alone. Whatever good it has ever done you, whatever good it will ever do you. There are many things I might have derived good, from which I have not profited, I dare say, Christmas among the rest. But I've always found Christmas to be a kind, friendly, charitable time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year, where men and women seem to open up their normally shut upon hearts and give to their fellow creatures. So, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or an ounce of silver in my pocket, it has done me good, will continue to do me good, and I say God bless it. Mr. <laughs> Let me hear one more sound from you, and you shall keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You, sir. Are a very powerful speaker. It's a wonder you don't go to Parliament. <laughs> don't be angry, Uncle. Come. Dine with us tomorrow. No! <laughs> but why? Why? Well, why did you get married? Because I fell in love? Because you fell in love. <laughs> Good afternoon. Nay, Uncle. You never gave that as a reason for never coming before. Why give it as a reason now? Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why cannot we be friends? You're wasting my time. Now, good afternoon. I'm sorry, Uncle, to find you so resolute. We've never had any quarrels to which I've been a party. But I've made my trial at Amish to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So, Uncle. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. <laughs> and to you, Mr. Cratchit, a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. And a very Merry Christmas to you and yours, Fred. That's the There's another fellow, my clerk, 15 shillings a week, and a wife and family going about Merry Christmas on his lips. We shall be tired of the madhouse. And Marley, I presume. <laughs> Do I have the pleasure? 
answer of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley. Dead. Dead? Dead. Dead seven years. Mr. Marley died seven years ago this very evening. Well, I have no doubt that his generosity is well represented by his surviving partner. You don't know me. Let's keep it that way, shall we? <laughs> In this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at this time. Many thousands are in want of common necessities, and hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the uh, union workhouses, are they in working order? Yes, but I wish they were not. And the treadmills and the poor laws? In full vigor. Plenty of both, sir. Ah, from what you originally said, I thought something had happened to stop them of their useful course. I'm glad to hear they're still working. After the impression that they scarcely furnish Christian cheer to the multitude, a few of us have endeavored to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time of all times when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What should I put you down for? Nothing! <laughs> oh, you wish to remain anonymous what I wish is to be left alone. Since you ask, that is what I wish. I do not make merry at Christmas, and I cannot afford to make the idle merry. I've given enough money to those institutions I just mentioned. And if there are people who are badly off, they should go there. But many can't go there, and many would rather die. Well, if they would rather die, then let them do so, and decrease the surplus population. Surely you don't mean that. Oh, I do, with my whole heart. Now, if you will let me get on with my business, and if you will get on with your business, good afternoon. Humbug. 
humbug, I tell you. see 
I cannot say. But I have sat here invisible beside you many and many a day. And that is no light part of my penance. I'm here tonight to warn you, Ebenezer. Warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. A chance and hope of my procuring. Well, you are always a good friend to me, Jacob. I thank you. You shall be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you spoke of? Because if it is, I think I'd rather not. <laughs> Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tonight when the bell tolls one. Well, couldn't I have them all at once and get it over with? Expect the second on the next night at the second hour. The third? Oh, he will come in his own time. Look to see me no more, Ebenezer. And look, that for your own sake, you may remember what has passed between us. Oh! Oh! Itself, then it was just a dream. Oh! Um, are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Oh, oh spirit, why do you come to me? Your welfare. Well, if it's my welfare you're thinking of, spirit, I'm, I'm much obliged, but the best thing for that would be an unbroken night's rest. Be careful. I speak of your reclamation. Take heed. Rise. And walk with me. Good heavens. I, I was bred here. I, I was a boy in this place. Your lip is trembling. Oh, and what is that upon your cheek? Oh, no, it's nothing, nothing. Leave me where you will. Do you remember the way? I remember it. Why, I could walk this blindfolded. Strange, I've forgotten it for so many years. Let us go on. Dick! Dick Wilkins! It's me, Ebenezer! These are the shadows of the things that have been. They have no consciousness of us. They won't hear you. Oh. The schoolyard is not quite deserted. A young boy sits alone. How many years were you there? Oh, eight years. <laughs> that many. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, left. There for the holidays. For eight long years. Well, yes, but how can you say he was alone? Why, why he, he had his books. Yes, he had dear old Alibaba and Robinson Crusoe who sailed around the island. And Friday, who ran to the creek and back. Who, hello there. Oh, dear boy. Oh, I wish. Oh, no, it's, it's too late now. What's the matter? Well, there was a, a young girl singing a, a Christmas carol at my door the other night. I, I should have to have given her something, that's all. Look, there's more. Let us see another Christmas day. Why, my sister Fan. Fan! Dear, dear brother, I'm coming to bring you home, dear brother. To bring you home. Home! Home, little Fan? Yes, home, for good and all. Home, forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than you speak. That home's like heaven. You know, he spoke so gently to me one dear night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should. And he sent me the coach to bring you. And you are never to come back here and be a man. But first, we are to spend all of Christmas together and have the merriest of times. You're quite a woman, little fan. A delicate creature. Who a breath might have withered, but she had a large heart. Oh, that she did, Spirit. I cannot deny it. God forbid. She died a young woman and has, I think, children? She is one child. True, your nephew, who bears a strong resemblance to your sister. Oh, does he? I, I never noticed. You never noticed? I'm here to think you went through your life with your eyes closed. Open them. Open them wide. Do you know this place? Why, yes, I, I was apprenticed here. Well, there's old Fezziwig. Fezziwig 
comes alive again, bless his heart. Yo there, Ebenezer, everyone, heads down, quickly, heads and, down. And Dick Wilkins, Dick and I were quite attached to were. Oh, dear boy. Boys, it's Christmas Eve. Dick, Ebenezer, let's get those shutters up quicker than we can say Jack Robinson. Howdy ho, boys, quickly, quickly, it's Christmas Eve tonight. There's more to life than books of talk and must be hope pleasures. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll try. Dear, our guests are arriving. Let us make music and dancing tonight. Yes, husband, our friends are here and so is our fiddler. We shall be making merry till the dawn breaks the sky, I dare say. <laughs>
And I can release you. Have I ever sought release? In words? No. Never. In what then? In a changed nature. In an altered spirit. In another atmosphere of life. Another hope is great end. In anything that made my love of any worth or value in your sight. Ebenezer, I release you with a full heart for the love of him you once were. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. Well. Spirit, Spirit, remove me from this place. I told you, these are the shadows of the things that happen. That they are, that they are. Do not blame me. Spirit, Spirit, remove me. Haunt me no longer. Spirit, Spirit. Thank you. 
for this day to be together. We thank you for this day of love and joy to share with each other and to share with you the fullness of our hearts on this special day. Amen. 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 What? Did you say something? <laughs> no. Yeah, well, I said no. <laughs> I would like to propose a toast to the founder of the feast, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon it, and I hope he would be My dear, the children, it's Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I am sure, on which one drinks the help of such an odious, stingy, Hard and feeling man is Mr. Scrooge? You <clears throat> know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, have some charity. Oh well, I'll drink his help for your sake and the day's sake, but not for his. A long life to him, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And I have no doubt he'll be very merry. Very happy. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. And a Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. A Merry Christmas. God bless us all. This should please you. Nothing in excess. Yes, indeed. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's just that I... I thought my clerk Cratchit would have a bigger portion, that's all. Well, that's hardly likely, considering the earn, wage he earns. Or, or should I say, picks your pocket every 25th of December? Spirit, do not mock me further. The, the error of my ways is becoming all too clear to me now. Take me from this place, please. There's one. How did the looks and behave? As good as gold. Even better. He gets so thoughtful, sitting by himself alone so much. He thinks the strangest things you've ever heard. On the way home today, he told me that he hoped that people saw him at church because he was a cripple, and it might be good for them to see him on Christmas Day and be reminded of who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. I do believe he's getting stronger every day. Oh, spirit. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure he's getting stronger. With our love, we will make him stronger. Oh, spirit, tell me that Tiny Tim will live. I see an empty seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch <coughs> without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Oh no, spirit. Tell me that Tiny Tim will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race will find him here. But what is that to you? If he'd like to die, he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. You use my own words against me. Then perhaps you should hold your tongue. Until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what men shall live and what men shall die? It may well be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions. Like this poor man's child. Oh, spirit. <coughs> Come. Touch my robe. We have a little time left. I was thinking of my uncle. Humbug, he said. He said that Christmas was a humbug as I live, and he believed it too. More shame for him, Fred. <clears throat> He's a comical old fellow, that's the truth. And not so pleasant as he might be. However, his offenses carry their own punishments, and I have nothing to say against it. I'm sure he is very rich, Fred. At least you always tell me so. But what of it, my dear? His money's of no use to him. He doesn't make himself comfortable with it. 
He has the satisfaction of thinking he's going to benefit us with it. I have no patience with him, Fred. Oh, I have. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill wills? Himself. Always. Here, take this into consideration. He doesn't come dine with us. What's the consequence? He loses a good dinner. Indeed, I think he loses a good dinner. The reason I talk about my uncle so is because of my mother, God rest her soul. He loved her very much. It's true. Fan loved me and I loved her. Oh, I wish she were alive today. I was only going to say that the consequence of his taking a disliking to us and not making merry is that he loses some pleasant memories, which could do him no harm. I'm sure he loses pleasanter companions, whether he can make in his old office or his dusty old chambers. I mean to give him the same chance year after year, or I defy him. If he finds me again, going year after year, saying, Uncle Scrooge, Merry Christmas, even if it leaves him in vain to leave his poor clerk at 50 pounds, then I've done something, and I think I should be into it. I shall see her. Fred looks very much like her. Yes, I, I was only recently reminded of that. Shall we have a game then? Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right, does everyone know the rules to the game similes? Yeah, you should have five seconds to answer. If you fail to give it acceptance. Fred, 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 just begin. Very well, very well. Proud as? Okay, yeah. Dry as a bow man, Joe. <laughs> Fun as my wife. <laughs> Quick as the wind. No, no. One, two, three, four, five. A wink, you idiot. Well, you said they could neither see nor hear us. <laughs> yes, quite <right>, nice. <laughs> Tight as. Tight as a drum. Everyone knows that. Tight as your uncle's purse, please. <laughs> no, Janet, that's quite wrong. You've lost and you must stand behind your chair. Tight as a drum, that's what I was thinking. Smart boy. A good head on his shoulder. As for the laughter at my expense, I shall forgive it in light of the merriment. It is time for us to go. That's my room. Spirit, why show me this 
What has this to do with me? Are they not part of the human race? Is this not your business? Oh, yes, but I've paid my taxes. What more would you ask of me? What more indeed? What more indeed? It is time for me to take my leave of you. What? No, no, you, uh, you can't leave me here. Take me back to my sitting room. You, you can't leave me here with them. Prepare to meet my brother in his own time. No, no, spirit. No, don't leave me, spirit. No, leave me here alone. What did I do? What did I say? He left alone with no one to even call out to. Are you the, the spirit of things yet to come? Oh, spirit, spirit, this is a fearful place. But, but in leaving it, I shall not leave its lessons. Oh, I am dread to find what you have before me, but, but as I know your purpose is to do me good, and I, I will be a better man than I was, I am prepared to, to bear you company with a thankful heart. Lead on, spirit. The night is waiting, and it's precious to me. Lead on. What's the ruckus? What is it, old woman? I got something you'll be wanting. Something you'll take a fancy to. Oh, be off. I know, cheap. It's a bargain. Quality, I tell you. Show me what you got, then. But be quick about it. I have little time to waste. You'll not find the likes of these too often. What have ye here? Who's the worst of the loss of a few things like these? Not a dead man, I suppose. <laughs> Not unless he wanted to keep him after he was dead. <laughs> Wicked old true. Why wasn't he natural in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have had somebody to look after him when he was struck with death instead of lying there gasping out his last alone by himself. Open up the bumble old choke. Let me know the value of it. What do you call these? That curtains? Quality. Finely made. Nothing but the best for the old miser. A lot of good it'll do it now. Well, wait. Those are my things. My bed linens. Not anymore. But how can this be? I'll call down the magistrate. Will these be missed? Not by anyone who knew him. <laughs> Certainly not by him who has it. <laughs> hey, I've seen you round these parts before. You work for him. You don't screw his housekeeper. Not no more. Found him cold in his bed. No one even cared enough to look after him. Holidays and all. Cold as stone. No need for his bed covers. That's for sure. So, old Scrooge be dead, eh? As dead as his own black heart ever was. So what do we give me for his things? Oh, before I be cold, my, my own house staff pawning off my things. <laughs> what harshness. Is there no respect for the dead? Take me from here, spirit. Show me a place where they would remember the dead with, with compassion in their heart, rather than this flagrant disregard for humanity. In the account of human compassion and kindness, you, Ebenezer, are the most bankrupt indeed. But come, touch my robe. Let me take you where true compassion still lies.
I think he walks a lot slower since I think so too. I have known him to walk with tiny feet on his shoulders very fast. But he was so light and easy to carry. And your father loved him so there was no trouble for him. No trouble at all. There's your father now at the door.
It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. Spirits oh, must have done it all in one night. I suppose they could, you know. They're spirits. They can do anything they like. <laughs> do you know the, the polters on the next street, the one at the corner, young girl? I sure hope I did. Oh, delightful, remarkable young lady. Uh, do you know, do they have that prize-winning turkey still hanging there? Are the ones we just made? Yes, that very one. It's hanging there now. Oh, good. I want you to go, and I want you to buy it. And I want you to have them deliver it to Bob Cratchit. Have them delivered it anonymous. It's to be a Christmas surprise. Now, if you'll do that in five minutes, I'll give you a shilling. No, no, do that in five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. Yes, sir, Mr. Church. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, my dear lady. Merry Christmas. How do you do? I hope you were successful in your endeavors. It's so kind of you to give your attention to those in need at this time of year. Mr. Scrooge? <laughs> That's my name. Although it's probably unpleasant to you. I hope you'll let me make it up to you, by. recently been made aware that I'm woefully ignorant about the surplus. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, no, don't thank me. There's a great deal of back payment in that sum, I assure you. You will come and see me, won't you? Oh, I will, I will. Thank you. Thank oh, no, 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 thank you. I thank you 50 times. A Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Right, here's your uncle. Let's not spoil the day. Janet, it's Christmas Day. Surely you'll to say hello and not spoil anything. Nephew, uncle, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Uncle, are you ill? <laughs> Yesterday you said anyone that utters those words should be boiled in their own pudding with a stake of holly through their hearts. Fred, forgive me for the things I've said. I, I've said a great many things. I shall spend the rest of my days trying to rectify my mind. And I'd like to start by meeting your lovely wife. Of course, Uncle Ebenezer, my wife Janet. Janet, my Uncle Ebenezer. It's a pleasure, my dear. You know, I was in love once, although I know you find that hard to believe. I lacked the courage, or perhaps the wisdom, to recognize the value of what was right in front of me. Fred, Janet, if the offer to dine with you at, at Christmas is, is still in effect, I should like to do so very much. Well, of course it is, Uncle Ebenezer. Uncle Ebenezer, you're always up. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad, Fred. Forgive me, I, I loved your mother. I believe I had forgotten that for a time, but 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 I've remembered it. Yes, I, I've remembered it now. Oh, uh, there's something I have to do, and, and I, I shall be there there quickly as I can. Merry Christmas. Uncle Ebenezer, you've made us both very happy. Oh, and I as well. Oh, God forgive me for all the time that I've wasted. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mr. Cratchit. Yes, Mr. Scrooge? What time is it? Um, why... Why... It's a half past nine, sir. Half past nine? Half past nine? Then why are you not at the counting house? But, sir, it's Christmas Day. Christmas sir, Day? Sir, you said yesterday Christmas that Day. I might be... In I shall room. not stand for this any longer. Therefore... Therefore, Bob, I'm going to double your salary. <laughs> Double it, sir. Double, Double it, Bob. Merry Christmas. A merrier Christmas than I've given you in many a year. And I will double your salary. I'll help you and your struggling family. And upon my life, upon my life, Tiny Tim will walk. Father, Father, you must come and see. A miracle's happened. You will never believe it. A turkey has been me as can be our supper. A giant turkey. Whatever shall we do? It was a surprise. The man was anonymous. There must be some kind of mistake. I don't know, Bob. The delivery said that the gentleman who sent it wished to remain anonymous. Oh, he did, eh? <laughs> <laughs> of course you can, Tim. You can keep it, and you can cook it, and you can, you can eat it, and have the best Christmas ever. What do you say, Bob? Oh, I say that's a splendid idea, Mr. Scrooge, and a Merry Christmas to you, and a Merry Christmas to us all. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. 
to Tiny Tim, who did not die. He was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. He had no further dealings with spirits. It was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that truly be said of us, all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us all, everyone. And God bless us all, everyone. Mm-hmm.